Don't forget too that at the point where uh, the voter goes into the booth mm. to drop the ballot, yeah. uh, there are those who have suggested that INEC also needs to see how do they adjust either the, the ballot box or the booth to the extent such that you know you won't be able to flash your paper. No, sure, so sure. all of those our have polling in administration have now been changed. We have worked on that. We have done it in such a way that the arrangement is such that the party agents would not, the cubicle would not be in such a way that you are, for instance, a party agent. It will not be arranged in such a way that the voter will be backing you people in such a way that he could make a show of what he has done. We have done that in the other way. The reverse. You have reversed that. You okay. Fa they face each other. Exactly. But so what guarantee is, is there that he can still not flip? It's just a paper. No, that is the point we are making. First, it's a violation of the law. And that's the job of security to deal with. But you must first and foremost look at why we have to take this seriously. Because in a democracy with weak and alternative control by the electorate, if the umpire, which is very, very in terms of regulation here, you know, INEC is one of those regulators that is very weak. When I weak in terms of the fact that we have not been strengthened, unlike NAVDAC, unlike NCC, when you do certain things, there are actions taken, which of course is subject to judicial review. But the point is that why we must deal with this matter is because it has implication for performance. If somebody is in office, has spent four years, and at the end of four years, he wants to recontest for election, what should I be going for him is the record of what he has done. But with this introduction of the idea of vote buying, where somebody is coming to challenge you, if all you need to do is to get as much money as possible, what is, where is the, what is the incentive for somebody who is in office to perform? Because he also has to be doing involved in agile vote buying. Okay. It is My, dangerous now take a look at this. for our democracy. Look at the distance between uh, those who are queuing up to vote yes. and then at the point where you're getting registered. And now, before you proceed to go drop your ballot paper. Yes. Now, it turns out that at this point, Okay, that's where you go do your thumbprinting. Yes. Do you thumbprint in that box or some people after they've been accredited right there just thumbprint? Now, what ought to have been, what I've done there is that the, the voter immediately after, because what you can see there, the agent are not the one there. It is the official that you are seeing there. Yeah. The agent and the other side. Because the people who actually do this uh, validation of uh, who they voted for are the agent. Mm -hmm. So what the voter, the one you are seeing, ought to have done was that immediately after making that choice, indicated on the ballot paper, he or she must fold it in the prescribed form, and it comes to the open. Yeah, now, at the point you make the choice, yes. if you make the choice while standing there... No, you cannot make the choice while standing there. You don't make the choice while standing there. Be and that is why, that is the essence of the secrecy. That is why we have cubicle. That's why we have cubicle. As a matter of fact, you must understand the history of secret balloting, the Australian secret balloting system. You see, for every civilization, there was a primitive past. In the United Kingdom, in America, there were incidents of vote by at the early stages. It was because of the need to, 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 to stop the debasement of the ballot that the Australian people came out with the idea of secret balloting. Such that, even if you are giving all the money to the voters, but because you are going to be doing secret balloting, you will never can tell whether they voted for you. But we have mm. modified open secret. No. The, secret, the secrecy aspect of it is that when you go to the cubicle that you have just shown there, mm -hmm. even though you are giving me money, I will go to the cubicle, make that choice. Nobody is saying that, that which is what section 24. 124 of the electoral act says that all of us have a duty to ensure the secrecy. Does that mean then that vote buying is going to fail? What? Oh, it's going to fail. And I must say this here, that election period is a moment where you test, evaluate the integrity of institution of states to the ideas of democracy. And what do I mean here? The INEC, security, the agencies, and indeed the elite of that society. For INEC, as the Bible says, 
under the leadership and in our own house, we want to let Nigerians know that we will continue to give meaning and purpose to the ballot. And what the chairman has said is in line with the constitution. We have said, look, we want to have a delicate balancing here. We need the citizens to report to us real life what happened in all our police stations. And at the same time, and that's why we created all the platforms that I have mentioned, a telephone line, to report to us what goes on. At the same time, we must ensure that no voter is allowed in consonant with the law okay. to do something that is at variance with the idea of the secret balloting system. Now, part of workers. the challenge we've seen over time is, you know, while the thumbprint, uh, they're not allowed to do it there. But after thumbprinting, they're supposed to fold it. Yes. And then take it and drop it in the in the, boot, in, in the, in the, in the ballot box, which is in, in the, the boot. open. Okay. Secret. You make the try secret. Fold it. Then in the open. That's what we call, uh, you know, secret, secret open, open balloting system. But you in put that, it there. in that process, there are those who, uh, for some reason, I don't know how they do that. Now the after thumbprinting, in the process of folding. They smear the ballot at some point, and that invalidates the ballot paper. Yes. Now, that is why the presiding officers are taught, particularly the APO that issues the ballot paper. What they are all expected to do is that once you have got to the point where you are going to be issued the ballot paper, the ballot paper will first and foremost must be folded in the prescribed form. All right? then you give it to the voter. So once he makes he or her choice in the cubicle, he, will, he or she will return it in the form that it has been uh, prescribed in the, uh, in, the, in the ballot system. But, and so what we are talking about here, the problem we have, we know we are in a state of anomie. A state of anomie does not depict the absence of laws. But it's a failure of enforcement. The whole of section 117 up to section 130 of the Electoral Act has captured all of these deviations from the standard expected. What we are now have problem we are having is the challenge of enforcement. Look, people have said, why can I not do this, do that, and all of that? Go and look at the provision of section 118 of the Constitution. Look at the provision of section, uh, uh, the third shadow, paragraph 15. In particular, Nigerians who are hoping having a copy of the Constitution, check section 160 of the Constitution of the Fatherland. It says that of all the executive bodies established under section 153 of the Constitution, only INEC. Only INEC that have the power that is not subject to any authority to make rules, regulation, and to regulate a procedure. And far more important than that, that section is that INEC has a duty, has a responsibility to impose a duty on its officials in the course of discharging its mandate of conducting free, mm. fair, mm. and credible elections. The problem we have in the country is that many people are, ought to be in jail by now. People are not being sent to jail. Yeah. In, now, 17, in, in 1872, in the UK, to deal with the incident of vote buying and debasement of the ballot, they came out with that law that if an agent of a politician, of a candidate, of a party is involved, in the act of vote buying as captured under our law for instance once you are caught you are going to be sent to jail a position may be banned from contesting exempted from part participating in that election if that act is found before the election you'll be exempted from participating you won't be banned for some years or for life